Okay, so I'm at uh, Steve Sickles Farm near Glen Morris in Brant County, and we're gonna talk about <clears throat> the seeding equipment that Steve uses in his no-till operation. And so, <clears throat> Steve, thanks for doing this with us today. And give us a little idea, what are you using to seed the various crops that you seed? So I've got a three planter system. I'm using a Kinsey 3600 to plant corn with Delta Force and their trash whipper system from Precision and Delta Force and spike closing wheels. I had the Precision closing wheels on the planter. They didn't plant a single acre. I tried it on a side hill and went, oh my, because of the draft and our side hills, the closing wheel system is so long, it didn't close a trench. So please don't make that mistake like I did. Uh, we went back to just a factory closing wheel. Uh, bean planter is a push pull 3500. Uh, I did have an eight row corn planter, so this, that's gonna be a challenge next year is to plant, because I plant my beans between my corn rows in a twin row scenario, because I slide my row units around on my bean planter, so I'm not planting into my wheel tracks. So it's a twin row bean system. I've moved six of the eight rows, which someone said it to me, oh, you're driving over 25% of your rows in an eight row, uh, 16 row bean planter. It's like, yeah, you're right, 25%. And I could see a reduced stand on a wetter year. I could see a reduced stand on those four rows. So I've slid those four. So now I can see the advantage that I'm further away from the corn root ball and residue from my calmer rolls. So I slid the other two row units that I could. I can't slide the middle one and I can't slide the one on the one end because there's no bar there. But it seems to work with what I'm doing. And I'm a 16 row bean planter, not a 15 like typically they are or a 12. 30, 23, I'd want to be a 12, 24 if, if I upgraded. And then for cereals and cover crops, I'm using just a 1590 with the spike closing wheels. I changed closing wheels a couple years ago and they do a, a lot better job. Other than that, there's not much different other than from factory on this drill. So you bought a new drill last, or new planter last year. And you know, there's some thoughts to something new to replace this no-till drill in the future. We'll talk about it a little bit, but how do you decide it's time to buy or rebuild a planter. I guess I should, I probably could have kept the eight row planter if I just said no to custom planting. But I, I guess I'm the no-till planting guy in the neighborhood. And if someone calls somebody, it's like, I need to plant no-till. Well, I'll call Steve Sickle because he can plant into a driveway with his planter. So I was planting and I hate to see people do tillage. So I'd say, yes, I can plant your no-till. If somebody called for me to plant their conventional corn, well, Sorry, I can't, I'm not that guy. There's lots of those planters in the neighborhood. It was a size thing. I plant a thousand acres with an eight row and trying to do my own planting and plant beans and, and do all my own spray and I needed something bigger. And when a neighbor says, hey, you wanna buy a planter together? Well, boom, that was the opportunity. Hey, we can upgrade and we can upsize as well. And when I said upsize, upsize enough that I didn't have to replace the ponies in front of it to pull it. So. I can, st it's a struggle with my hills, but we're going to make this tractor that we've got pull that 12 row planter. It, it did it this past spring. I think with a little more balance for next year, it'll work even better yet. So when Peter's acres get planted, do they get planted with his tractor or your tractor? With my tractor, cause it's all outfitted and hydraulics. His tractor just doesn't happen to have the hydraulics that this one does. Mm -hmm. And we're thinking of going to a hydraulic drive fertilizer for next year. So we can have row by row shutoffs and be a little more accurate with our with our rate, so that's gonna require more oil, yeah. Planters don't wear out really, right? They usually get moved or traded before that, but what are the operational changes across the operation that get triggered when you change your seed equipment? Well, and changing sizes, that factor that changing beans is gonna change. I'm still an eight row corn head. Am I gonna, I don't think I'm gonna to go to a 12 row corn head. It, it, the thought has crossed my mind, but just then you got to take it on and off. I'm, I seem to get around all the time with the eight row on and my rolling ground and eight row, a 12 row head does not flex. Well, I guess money fixes that. I can buy a flexing corn head if I, if I write the check for a brand new one. Um, it, yes, it, it, it's going to prevent, it's making me think of whether I made the right move and, and all the repercussions of changes is it going to mean more tillage on my corn stalks to make my bean planter or am i just going to set my gps at a five degree angle and plant cornerways across my corn rows we'll, we'll see what happens next spring there are so many options available on planters and drills and air seeders nowadays you know what are the must-have things that you know 
from your point of view, you had to have on that new planter and that you would ask that you would want on, on a new drill? Downforce management, I think, in what we're doing is a must have. With our hills and the amount of flex we're asking, you can't, springs have a different pull if they're maxed out versus they're just starting to pull. So uh, springs just don't work in what we're doing. And if you're in a wheel track, you're not getting your seed to depth or any other sort of issue that, because you can't see a wheel track from last year or two years ago. And you know, that soil is just harder to penetrate. And then the moisture content, you, you usually set your planter the same way as you did last year. Well, sometimes that doesn't work. You, you've got to get out and dig and then changes in the field. A hilltop's drier and harder than the hollows. So downforce management is key. The new plant, the new corn planter is simple in that it's still box fill. Everything's individual hoppers, but I did that for custom planting. I'm still all bags and everybody else is bags. So I didn't want to be climbing those stairs and I wanted the weight spread out. I've seen that from compaction days and stuff for central fill and those pinch row effects of the center of the planter. I wanted that weight spread out and filling is not any, it's got a cross auger. So you fill in one spot, it's filling with fertilizer while I'm dumping seed and it's a good workout, keeps me young. You also on the new corn planter have the uh, special um, row firmers. The smart firmers. Smart firmers. It's good in that it sees the difference. I've learned that my no-till, the temperature doesn't change going from tillage to no-till in the same field within 50 feet if it was a tile run or whatever you fixed. The moisture changes, but the temperature doesn't. So we're not, the thoughts that we've warmed the soil up with tillage, in my mind is a fallacy, but you are changing the moisture content of that, letting, it, letting that soil dry out with a little bit of tillage. Uh, the o, the o organic matter numbers and the CEC, it's and the soil moisture, you can go through a wet standing water with that thing and it doesn't sense that the water is waterlogged. So to have it set to automatic depth, I wouldn't I wouldn't bet the farm on the on the numbers that it's given me. It's a it's a good tool, but it's not a must have in my mind anymore. And you mentioned going to uh, row shut off and stuff like that. So you're not equipped with that currently? Not on fertilizer. I'm, ro I'm, ro fertilizer. I'm, ro I'm row shut offs on my bean and corn planter. Absolutely. I want to save that seed wherever you double up. You've got. Those are must haves. Absolutely. You, the number of cockeyed fields we got, if you double plant beans, you've got spindly plants or white mold. And with corn, you've got spindly plants at lodge. And it's just a nightmare to combine. Now it's full speed on every pass. Be the speed you not you making it sound like I'm driving like a madman three mile an hour and you you can get every cob and so nice to have items then that are you missing anything that you wish you had and or that you're thinking about adding I met I had VF tires on the old planter I missed them and they they got I've got to have better tires on that new planter for next year the the planter road rough and talk about ruts even on dry soil I've got to get vf radials on that planter all the way across because always a psi on those tires versus the vfs on the old one the old one vfs on the eight row a lighter planter no no doubt but my wing tires should be relatively the same i think i was running 22 or 24 pounds on those tires where the new planter they're 70 or 80 on the mainframe and just the bias plies on the wings and just you could fly across the field when you're done planting the field and you got to get out you can boogie across the planter, just floats like it's on air, where it, this planter just jiggle, jiggle, shake, shake, which is not good for the planter. And just, and you, you can tell by the field, it's, man, we're cutting in. So we, we got to change that. What was the game changer that that's the planter that I want? And that's what made the decision to buy that one. The brand was it worked in the past. So that was, I looked at other configurations. It's nice and narrow on the road. Uh, it didn't put a lot of tongue weight to the tractor when it was folded, which on our hills, there'd be some hills on these roads where if I'm climbing a hill, I can't, I'd have the front wheels in the air probably while I'm roading it. So this planter roads fairly easily. Just, just the history of the planter working in the past and pretty well the same systems on the new planter as on the old planter. All right. Let's just look at some of the planter and just talk about some of the features that uh, sort of Make it a Kinsey. Well, I like that there's two hinge points. That's another 
so following the ground a little more some of the other brands were split were six and six uh makes a little more pinch row a little bit because your cor the hinges are way above this ground so i'm going to have a little bit of issues where it really flexes picking corn uh dry fertilizer spread all the way across the planter sp spreading the weight i'm able to pull because I'm a one-man show, I put a hitch on this and extended the tongue on my wagon and my pickup truck so I could still pull be equipment behind the planter. Some other brands I wouldn't be able to do that with. Chain, again, the closing wheels, I mentioned that the precision ones didn't work, so we went back to the, just the Yetter spikes. They seem to work really, really well. Only grabbed a couple stones this year, and the stones I grabbed were in work dirt, not no-till. So just... The soft soil didn't want it, they wanted to bulldoze versus the no-till wants to engage and spit it out. And notice one thing I, you might not notice, but notice the narrow gauge wheels around the wheels. Some of those row units have a wide on one side and narrow on the other. I am scotch, so I haven't, didn't bite the bullet to buy all narrow gauge wheels. I could, but the narrow ones are next to the wheel, so I've got more room for stones to travel through there, just less, because I've banged up my row units on the old one, because a stone will come right up around the tire and right around the row unit. So that just gives that extra inch and a half or two inches more room for a stone to travel through there without causing any damage. So it is equipped with a precision downforce, and that's like, the, there's no decision, that just has to be on it. Uh, yep, and that's hydraulic downforce. The compressor there is was for the row cleaners, for, is for the row cleaners. It was also for the new closing wheels, but not needed since we removed it. But we needed the compressor for the closing wheels because they're they're adjust or the trash wheels. They're adjustable from the cab. And how much do you, how much time do you do spend changing that? Usually, you pull it in the field. You kind of know. Where, I was basically setting it for twenty or thirty psi of downforce. If you'll go through a low spot that's been flooded out and it has that corn stock residue that's floated up on one side, you can quick bump it up to maybe 40 or 50 or 60 PSI. And then there was some fields where, hey, we can we could just let it float. Or, and there was the odd field, there was a couple fields, I raised them because they weren't doing anything, why bother wearing them out? Just, just lift them out of the way. So they, they do a nice job and they, it, it basically looks like it's strip tilled seen some strip tillers in the area and my planter looks like a strip tiller you come back across the field after one with just a pass of the field and that soil starting to dry out so you know you're it's a nice dark soil and it's gonna get that seed out of the ground and hopefully move that residue away for the slugs to work on this planter is a little different my old planter had a pusher style fertilizer disc this one gets the fertilizer two by two like it's it's down there and it's i'm noticing i think there's a fair bit of resistance with those fertilizer discs just in the amount of pull the planter requires and we've straightened them a little bit and that it, it, they were fairly aggressive and they were moving dirt so we put a wedge kit in to straighten them up a little bit and is there downforce on them as well that's that's what you said that's something to think about no they're just they're just springs so they're they're working all the time and then there's the smart firmer and the closing wheels. And, and actually, if I wasn't so scotch, I would have had steel spaded wheels on the closing wheels. My bean planter does have some steel ones, and I can go one less spring notch because of the extra weight of the steel wheel. But the plastic ones are half the price. That's why I did it. The, close, this, the last closing planter had the clean sweep system on it. This one works quite a bit better in that it's got a wheel to set your depth and then you manually adjust how, and I never changed that once I manually set the orientation between the wheel and the depth of the tines, I never changed it. You just change your pressure from the cab, but they seem to work really, really well. Just it folded up right, we're weighing it there to see what that, that planter, it's got some, there's a lot of steel in that planter. When I bought the eight row, I priced a 12 and I shied away from the 12. Now I've got a 12, but I bought it on weight per pound Pounds per row. The 12 row is one and a half times the weight per row of an eight row. So, and that's all just steel carrying that frame in the frame. So now we've, now with tire technology and air inflation system, I think we can mitigate a lot of that effect on the tires. Moving to your bean planter. So this is the bean planter. We plant all our beans between the rows and it's been modified since Ian took this picture, but we've got single wheel trash rippers on there now. 
which do a nice job, but I had to modify them in that they only sold a right. I think it, they sold a right or it's a left, but I took half of them and made them a left, switched them around, cut them off and flipped them over and made them throw the other way. So the idea is my corn stalks that are still standing, because I did used to run stock stompers and I didn't like what I was doing and that my debris was blowing and catching any stocks that weren't standing and have a snow fence effect. So I'd have trash, no trash, trash, no trash, because I was trying to save my tires. So I was only running four stompers. So we took them all off, leaving the trash standing and using that standing trash as a snow fence for the trash rippers and that we're not burying what we're gonna plant on the back rank. Because if the trash whipper on the back rank will bury what the first front rank of that planter has already planted. So the idea is to throw the trash against those standing stocks and it works fairly effectively. Where there's a lot of buggy traffic, you notice you're throwing more trash on that planted row. And I spread manure on one field, so a lot of the wheel traffic beat them down. I was, I'd drive a little slower to save the burying that front, the front rank. And that planter has downforce on it as well. Fairly simple for the amount of money tied up. It looks like pretty simple, but that's why I'd like to see down the road getting rid of the bean planter and the drill and having one fairly high tech bigger planter and that i could be a 20 or a 25 foot drill to plant corn and beans and then I, i'd probably move away from planting in between the rows and probably do a five degree angle gps plant is what likely what i'd end up doing do you want to mention what you're kind of thinking about is that replacement unit i'm looking at a drill from england which is a horizon it's a central fill unit with big big 710 or 750 vf tires out the back with dry fertilizer, precision units, and I'd probably get it that might be a 25 foot to plant beans, but I would slide the row units in the off season and get six inch weed out of it. So that would make a little better planter for, get a better yield from wheat because we go from seven and a half down to six inch. It's not ideal, to, ideally we'd be four inch, but I, it's tough to find a drill that does that and lets residue travel through it in a no-till situation because I'm not going to tillage. I'm not going to tillage to make a planter work. How does the system as a whole change the buying decision around planters and drills, right? If you're a no-tiller, are you looking at the piece of equipment that you're wanting to buy differently than if you were tilling? Oh, absolutely. You, I think if you were tilling, you, you'd have, you wouldn't have near the stuff on the planter. You could have a naked planter. And then to make that no-till work, you've got to look at your fertility system that's going with the seed as well. And I, I think you've got to have dry fertilizer on that planter for bean, for, sorry, for corn and wheat. Beans, I th I'm leaning on that residual fertility. That's why my bean planter has no fertilizer on it at all. And I, it, it seems to be working. So, you know, lots of people have been looking uh, with the price of commodities and stuff like that to, to think about new planters. You know, what are the things or the pitfalls that others can avoid um, from, from your experience? One thing is I've got a lot of wavy colders on, on a frame sitting around here that I don't want to bring anything now with the planter. I want to leave that wet dirt in the bottom of the trench. So don't put anything on that planter that's going to bring wet dirt up to the surface that you're just going to stick to the closing wheels. And the first no-till planter I had was wavy colders and it was bringing up soup at times. Now my soil health is different now, but again, you're hair pinning, you're, you're having two, twice as many things that you have to get to depth in the ground. So just make sure your seed discs are sharp and new and make that work. Like, and that's key. Make, I've seen some planters like, your discs are wore out. You can't no-till with this. It doesn't do a good job and they have to be shimmed properly. If you were a conventional tillage guy for the acres that you're doing and you were working ground, would you have to have a bigger planter because you're spending more field time than what you're currently doing with the no-till system? Like, is the size of the planter gonna change as a function of no-till versus conventional? I would because I'd be, I have to do the same amount of planting half the time because I'd be sitting in a tillage tool doing that as well. And then my whole fertility would probably change because I'd probably be spreading urea ahead and cultivating it in versus my weed and feed system that I'm doing now. So it, it'd just be a whole snowball effect of what would change. I, I, you'd be looking at it, Ethan would have to grow up real quick. Okay, well, that covers everything that I wanted to talk about. Any last comments to the people that will be viewing this? Talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends, have lots of conversations and, and keep thinking of how, how can I tweak the system 
How can I make it work? What can I change? Don't make big changes all at once, make little changes. Maybe have some custom planting done or look at other planters and the jobs they do in your environment, like on different soil types that is different again yet. So it's gotta be kind of on your similar soil type and similar management. And is your planter gonna be equipped with CTIS eventually? Absolutely, for next year it will be. I'm hoping all three planters are equipped because the same tractor's pulling it. So it'll be, they'll, all three planters will be equipped with CTIS. And is the combine rear tires equipped with CTIS? No, they're not. Is that something that you're thinking about? No, because the tires, when you take the head off, you get more weight, more speed. By what I've seen, I don't think I need to spend the money CTS on a combine for, for what we're doing. If I was, mm, no, I was, I was going to talk about a folding head and stuff like that with my hills and stuff on the road again. Yeah. Now you're nose diving and emergency stops. You've got no control. So I don't think I'm going down that road either. Very good. Well, Steve, on behalf of those that will have a chance to look at this um, come winter, thanks very much for taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you. Thank you.